We are back on the property this weekend for the long weekend and the project for this trip is going to be installing the wood stove which is in this box and what we decided to do is run the chimney out this window so we're going to remove this in my other video I detailed how this is removable I just screwed it in so we'll remove the window, put plywood on the outside, run the thimble through, and run the chimney up. Um, it's best to run a chimney straight up, but because of the gambrel style roof and the two lofts, um, it's it would be more of a challenge to run it up and have the right clearance and not have it be in the middle of the shed. This messy pile pipe here is our stove pipe. We got it off the side of the road from a house nearby for $125. So it was three sections of class A chimney pipe and this through the wall um, elbow. So pretty cool because just the through the wall kit is at least $450 so big saving and then these class A pipes are $150 a piece we actually bought another section yesterday because we weren't going to be high enough we're not claiming to be professionals but I've seen quite a few YouTube videos where people are installing single walled stove pipe on the exterior that is not recommended for wood stove installs. You want to use some sort of insulated pipe, either double walled or triple walled. This is because the exhaust gases will cool too quickly in a single walled pipe. That can cause creosote buildup. It can also cause drafting issues. So if you want to do it correctly, use insulated pipe. Uh, double walled stove pipe clearances are six inches. The Class A chimney pipe we have here, the clearance is 2 inches. You always want to maintain clearances if it's outside. You don't want it to be too close to your building. Always follow what the manufacturer recommends. So, yeah, we saved quite a bit of money with this. Um, and it's not in terrible shape. There was a little bit of soot in there, but pretty cool. So, we also have the supports for the chimney pipe and then obviously this is the support for the elbow so the project for today it's late in the afternoon is going to be getting all this stuff away from the wall it got too dark last night to film but i moved all the stuff off the back wall well most of it and I still need to put that shelf up over there. But this is what it looks like. This is our adorable little wood stove from Northwoods Fabrication. They're out in Minnesota. Um, they just make little like cabin and tent wood stoves. This one's good for 800 square feet. Obviously the shed is a lot smaller than that. Because we're not insulated in the shed, and should be fine to use this. Look at that. There's this, the tour inside. <laughs> nice big burn box. Yeah, yeah, it's good size. And these are the legs we're going to put them on. Alright, so it comes with a bolt, a nut, lock washer. Put our bolt. Put our leg on. Lock washer. And our neck. There it is. All put together with the legs on. I think your coffee's done. The coffee's done. This is the first time we've ever worked with single wall stove pipes, so we have the pleasure of trying to snap it together. We 
just found a YouTube video on how to do it, and we're going to try that. Taylor's just pouring his coffee. So we're waiting on him. There we go. Oh. There we go. And there it is. This one wasn't so bad. I feel like once you know how it goes together, it's nice and lined up too. This is the third one we've done. We're practically pros now. So what you do is you put it down on the ground like this, start at one end, snap it into this panel. Maybe. Now I'm all nervous. And that's it. And it's in. And then, and you, then just you just straighten it out. Well, make it into a circle. Again. Round it out. And there you go. There we are. Single wall stove pipe. So we have never done a wood stove install. This is the first time ever. There is no wood stove expert on YouTube that I've been able to find on how to do installs. There's a bunch of YouTube videos made by people that don't really know what they're doing. So we're trying to do it the safest way we know how based on what I've read and I found a couple videos I I think should be okay, but um, so yeah, we're not claiming to be experts at this. I would only use this video for watching for pleasure. I wouldn't say it's educational because again, we don't know what we're doing, but we're trying to do it the safest way we can. So this is what I know so far though. This, the knurled end of the stove pipe goes into the stove. It always goes into the flat edge of your stove pipe when you connect it. So this is the knurled end, this is the flat edge. So right now we're going to start a fire in here and we'll let that burn for a couple hours while we work on the inside. We realized we forgot to install our chimney damper. Gonna install it about 12 inches up. Perfect. And for the record, that size is 15 64ths. If you ever buy an Imperial stove damper, that's the size you're gonna drill for a six inch damper. All right, we got it all set up. There it is. That's how you do it. Got all our kindling from cherry trees that were on the property for our inaugural burn <laughs> in the wood stove. So we start with some paper, which is kind of damp. I'm hoping it's gonna burn well. And then we put a layer of small stuff on top. We put our flu temp thermometer on there just so we can monitor how hot this is getting. Make sure it gets hot enough to burn these pipes. 
but the fire is roaring in there. It's so cute and cozy looking. You can kind of see the paint starting to burn. That's what we want to see. Definitely don't want that in the shed. So it's getting nice and toasty. It's leaf peeping season. It's been a couple hours, we're still burning. But I think we'll be ready to put the fire out soon. Still a little bit more on this top pipe to go. But I'm not too concerned. We might be cutting that anyway. Yeah, it puts off quite a bit of heat for a small stove. piece of T111 that I cut out back in. It's a nice airflow through here now. I like it. Got the trim off. The piece that I have that I thought would fit in the window doesn't fit. I'm going to cut a piece to fit in there. This was left over from the shed. I got the piece of T111 patch in there. I put Z flashing around so it won't leak, hopefully. And then I'll caulk around these edges or put trim I'm not sure what I'll do but it's in there I just gotta frame it on the inside now It's all framed in, so I'm gonna go nail it on the outside. The wood stove is all cooled down. It's been several hours since the fire was going in there. So I brought it in to sight it out. I'm gonna get the wall thimble and mark where I need to cut. We're attempting to draw the circle for the thimble to go out and it's kind of nice because this stove we can bring it up or down because it's not really heavy so we can adjust our circle a little bit but we're just trying to figure out the best placement for this. So. for the thimble and it adds structural strength to the wall. So oh, if you're doing your own wood stove install, it's 
through the wall, you will need some kind of support for the thimble. Yeah. And probably won't look like ours because you won't be going through a window. But this is what ours looks like. Yeah, there's a lot of framing here just because they had to patch this piece in and it's a lot, but mm. at least we'll know the, the chimney will be supported by the wall, so. Yep. Our thimble is in. We screwed it in with some torx head screws, so removal will be easy if we ever need to take it out, hopefully. Hopefully. But we got our uh, T on there. It sticks out pretty far, but it'll clear the roof or the overhang for sure. There's a little wasp up there. Um, so what we're gonna do is put some four by four posts in the ground here to support that. And then we'll put our chimney on. Taylor finished digging the hole, so now we're gonna put the posts in. two sections above the peak. is very hard to see but we have the whole chimney pipe up taylor's on the roof still but we got the last section up there we're just sending the rope down which we use to get the pipe up there it's kind of too dark to show that so he's gonna head down and we're gonna call it a day it's been a long day so he deserves a lot of credit for going up there too there is the stovepipe all installed. The only thing we need is uh, around that support on the that's attached to the rafters. We need to get a bolt to go in there, which we'll get today. But yeah, so the <clears throat> the chimney part of this is all done. Now it's just time to do the wood stove on the inside, which is the important part. So we were gonna use masonry board. We had bought some from Lowe's and it smelled really bad. Um, and that was just in the back of our truck. We didn't even bring it in here. So we didn't want that in here. It was like some weird off-gassing going on. I did cut one of the masonry boards and we will probably use that for like a spacer or something. Um, or we can, if we feel like we don't have enough coverage on the wall, we'll use it. We're gonna use this instead. This is just stove board made for going behind wood stoves. Um, and then for our spacers, we didn't have spacer kits there, so we're just gonna use one inch copper pipes. And this, um, this will just go on the framing and then our screw will go through this, um, blackboard here so that's the plan for now it's raining outside so 
It's a little cluttered in here because we can't put the cots outside or anything. You can see the rain out there. Um, so we're gonna be working on this and hopefully this works out. We've got the board centered on the wall here where we want it. And I'm going to drill the holes for this so that we can mount it. And you're supposed to drill them every 16 inches. You don't put any spacers behind right where the stove is, so we won't do any in the middle. We'll just do them on the edges. All right, I drilled one hole. Let me put my spacer in. I also want to note I have one and a half inch airspace. It said one inch. I think one to two is fine. Um, it's resting on these two by fours, but I'll pull them out after. This was just to get the right airspace behind there. Yesterday we got this board installed, but now we need to install something around the thimble to protect the studs here. So we did a lot of brainstorming. We were going to use this smaller sheet and cut it, but we don't really want to do that. We still have a sh partial sheet of masonry board left, so we're going to use that. So I'm going to cut pieces to fit on either side and then obviously the top and the bottom. Hopefully we can get this thing running. Be nice to have some warmth in here and dry it out a little. It rained quite a bit last night. It's still kind of raining out there, so it'd be nice to get warm. And it's supposed to be 42 tonight. I'm Hannah's moral support. Mostly here to keep her spirits high while she does all the hard work out in the rain. Keeping it nice and warm and dry in here with my morning cup of coffee. One down. Just cutting some strips down to size, grabbing the measuring tape because the boss asked me to. There it is. Looks good. I'm gonna put it on. I'm cutting the one inch spacers out of our copper pipe using a sawzall which is not ideal, but it's working. So we put a couple pieces of this masonry board up around here. Again, we're not professionals. Not sure if this is the right way. You know there needs to be an inch airspace here. We have the copper pipe under there. But as far as airflow up through here, I'm not really entirely sure. Hopefully it'll be okay. We have a fire extinguisher and we're not going to get a roaring fire. We're also going to get a laser thermometer to just keep measure of how hot this wood is getting back here. So I'm going to put this piece up. So there's our piece up there. Now we're gonna get one to fill in the gaps. All right, there's our cement board up on the wall. It's not great looking, but it should protect 
the wall from the stovepipe, and all of these have the spacers behind them. So they have the one inch air gap. Now we will need to set up our floor space. Obviously we need to clear all this stuff out and put the stove in its spot and then put the stove pipe in. So the clearance for the wood stove needs to be 18 inches in the front. So we can open the door without ashes coming out and then six inches on either side. This is a pretty big board here, but that'll meet the requirements. It's gonna take up quite a bit of space, but that's the safest way to do it. Taylor's putting up a wire right now for our heat shield. So we have those two pieces of metal roofing right there with two of these it should be thicker than 24 gauge so what we're gonna do is hang them from the loft here as sort of a heat shield to protect this because we have a lot of wood up there so we're gonna hang them with this cable we're not gonna drill into them or anything they're just gonna hang there so we can use them in the future after we take the wood stove out of here and Hope this idea works. In my head it works, but in real life we'll see. So there it is, my idea seems to have worked. We got these bricks from the old chimney um, of the house that was on our property. They're sort of just in a pile near the old foundation. It's our snap lock stove pipe adapter. I'm gonna put it over here. So we got the stovepipe in, attached to the thimble. We just need to screw the pipe down. We also had to lift the stove a little with some cement board. I got two sheets there and then we have the bricks. And it's pretty sturdy, it's, it's not moving. So for the screws, we just have Imperial stovepipe screws are made for stovepipe. These are self drilling black oxide we are going to put three screws per joint put the one in here and this still only has two holes so we, need... we won't drill another one in here but that should be fine There it is. 
It is ready to have a fire burning in it. Taylor's chopping up some piddling out there. But it looks good. We ended up having to do another layer. So we have three layers of the cement board and then bricks on top of that. And again, it's sturdy. But we have our tilt here. It's kind of hard to see, but you need at least a quarter inch per foot. This is definitely more than that. Uh, to prevent creosote from running back, it'll run back into the stove. We tried to get the fire going without paper because we couldn't find any, but then I found some, so. We're using paper. There's oh. smoke. It's drafting. It's drafting. I don't see any leaks anywhere. Incredible. Safety is very important when you have a wood stove. So we got a smoke and carbon monoxide alarm and a fire extinguisher. This is good for A, B, and C combustibles. So we will be leaving this fire extinguisher in here, readily accessible, and I'm going to install this CO alarm now. Here it is, carbon monoxide detector installed. We've got some ribeye steaks by the nice warm stove. Making coffee on the wood stove. Last fire in Maine. Sad face. This is the last fire for this trip. But our little stove is keeping us warm at night. It wasn't too cold, it was like 40, which we've slept in before, but it's nicer to have heat. It's definitely a great addition to the shed. Yeah, makes it 1,000 times more livable. Tune in next time. I don't know what project we'll be doing. Sure, it will be something. <laughs>